Now what I've done is update the diagram again with the answer that we just found in the last part, the speed that the ball hit the ground, 34.3 meters per second then. So how do we now find out the time that it took then for the ball to go up here and back down again? Well, I find quite often these problems are often done very badly, that they're done in two stages, two or more stages where people consider the motion up to the first part here, find out the time there, then they find out the time it takes to come all the way down here, and then add the two times together. It's not wrong, but it does take a lot of time, and you don't have to do that at all. Look, I'll show you. What we need to do is set up our SUVAT equations again as normal, so we'll just put those down S, U, V, A and T. But what we're going to do is consider the motion from the start here, when T is naught, all the way through to this value down here. Now, we need to set up our positive direction and I would always set it up in the direction of the initial velocity. So we've got it going upwards initially, so for the SUVAT equations I'm going to have upwards as positive. And we've got to take care here because S, remember, is displacement, not distance, displacement. So that means that even though this ball goes up here and back down here, if we have this as the zero level of displacement, then this is a positive displacement up here. As it comes back down here, the displacement is zero. As we come down through here, when we get to here, the displacement is minus 49. So minus 49 there. We'll put in the units meters. What's U? Well, U is plus 14.7. So we'll do 14.7 there, meters per second. V, take care here, V down here is minus 34.3 because upwards is positive, this is acting downwards. So that's minus 34.3 meters per second. And as for acceleration, even though this particle goes up here and back down again, we just look at the acceleration over the whole journey if you like and it is acting downwards. So it's acting downwards in the opposite sense to our direction here so it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second per second. So we've got to work out what T is. So there's quite a few equations that uh, use these variables with T in but we want a simple one and I don't want to use something like S equals UT plus a half AT squared. You can experiment with it. I'd welcome, you know, I would suggest that you do experiment with it. But, you know, if we're working out T and we've got like quadratic here in T, that's going to take some time. So I don't want to use that. I want to turn to a linear equation. And we have got one, a nice easy one. We can use V equals U plus AT lovely equation to use, dead easy in this kind of question. So V we know is minus 34.3, so if we just put that in, minus 34.3 equals U, which is 14.7, and then we've got plus AT, plus A, which is minus 9.8, multiplied by T. So how easy is this? All we need to do is add this term to both sides, so we get 9.8t, add 34.3 to both sides, and you've got 14.7 plus the 34.3. And if we add these two, uh, we come to 49, so we've got therefore 9.8t equals 49. Divide both sides now by 9.8, and you end up with an exact result, t equaling 5. 5 seconds then it takes for that ball to go from here, up there and back down again. So 
very easy if you always adopt this kind of procedure of looking at the overall displacement. Okay?